fight for the Iron Kingdoms as a Warcaster. Take control of the mighty Jax, Arcane Devices, and Dark Sorceries to bring the fight to the War Machine Hub on BeastsOfWar.com. Keep your blaster handy, the West is a dangerous place. Fight to survive as men turn to monsters and the dead rise on the Wild West Exodus Hub at BeastsOfWar.com. Hey guys, today I'm joined by Alessio Cavatori. We're going to be talking Terminator Genesis. <laughs> it's finally happened. Yes, it has. Woof. <laughs> a, a, a Terminator <laughs> war game, guys, is now upon us. We have uh, the the box. Uh, this is what you're what you're going to get, and uh, I'd like to take a little bit of time, Alessio, just to pick through the box, see what's in it, and get your thoughts and experience on everything that you've built as we go along. <laughs> so kicking off, I just want to show you the actual box art there. Uh, so uh, it's a good size box, actually. You have uh, some classic artwork on the front and on the back you get a good idea of what's in there. So all the tokens, the miniatures and the battle mat. He's on the back. He's, oh, <laughs> that's so cheesy. <laughs> right, without further ado, let's get stuck in Alessio. So opening up, um, first thing that we've got coming out is the rule book. Um, sexy rule book, actually. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, it's very nice. So um, I imagine we're going to get lots and lots of nice images from the movie. Oh, uh, there's one there. So let me just move that across. Wow. So. Oh, there we go. Oh, is Daenerys Targaryen? Yes. <laughs> um, we have our uh, table of contents. Now to start actually seeing the layout of it. So everything is all very, very slickly laid out. And by the time you get to page 12, you're immediately into starting to see what's actually in the box and how it all goes together. So Alessia, what am I, um, what am I looking at here? So um, these are the, the tokens. So while you're descri describing them, I will also show them off um, on these actual token sheets as well, so. Okay. So, well, those are a very important part of the game. One of the main, I would say, points of uh, point of sale, points mm -hmm. of difference of the system. Uh, those are the templates, which if you want to punch some out, so demonstrate, they, they do a lot of work for you to okay. make the game go fast. So we'll, we'll kick off with these kind of longer ones here, Alessio. Yep. So it's, um, now, they must, oh, they're double-sided. They are. <laughs> hey. Right. <laughs> so these three little templates, mm -hmm. one, two, and three, they have the crawling speed, yep. the walking speed, mm -hmm. and the running speed mm -hmm. yeah, of the models. Now, you can use a tape measure. Just You can just go, you know, that's five inches, that's 11 inches. So it's mm -hmm. basically six inches move or 12 inches move. But instead of using a tape measure, you can use these. Mm -hmm. Just stick your model at one end, move it to the other end. Yeah. That's it. Very simple. Mm -hmm. So that's your movement. And after the movement, say, for example, you decided to have a little walk. Mm -hmm. You walk, and then you go, after moving your model from, the end, from one end to the other, you turn it around, and there you go. You have a range template that gives you the, the range of the weapon, the number you need to hit with that weapon in mm -hmm. medium range, short range, or close combat range. Mm -hmm. So these templates do the movement and ranging shooting of everything. Yeah. Uh, as I said, you don't have to use them. You can use a tape measure, but I think that we find that make the and game go very fast. Just to be clear, I could use, for example, uh, this one here to do a walk yep. and then use that for my range. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's everything you need. All of the main move uh, distances and range distances are just on these three on there. three cards. Yep. Lovely. Um, the other tokens in Alessio are all kind of uh, markers, so uh, m for the activations and what are these ones here? Those are command markers. Basically, if you upgrade some of the models, some of the endoskeletons in the in the starter set, because we, in the starter set doesn't include any models of command endoskeletons. It just has the basic endos endoskeletons. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the command units, but there are command units, and you can purchase the model or just simply upgrade your models by placing this next to them and saying, "Is a commander level one? Is a yeah. commander level two? Awesome. To show you guys the rest of the the stuff that's on the actual card sheet itself, so we have 
um, these, which I'm assuming are objective tokens. Objectives, yeah, on this yeah. side, neutral, objectives. Mm -hmm. And then if you have some scenarios where you need to find a particular one, then have numbers, so you can roll, put the scenarios and roll to see which scenario you're looking for, which objective mm -hmm. you're looking for, you know, to keep it secret yeah. and stealthy kind of thing. Uh, the little yellow markers, uh, Alessio? Yeah, so. on one side they are yellow markers, uh, they mm -hmm. are for, uh, for flying vehicles like helicopters when they land, that yeah. means they're on the ground. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and well, on the on the reverse, there's the funny. <laughs> it's dogs. Dogs, indeed. Dogs. Very important to sniff your infiltrator units out and yeah. uh, point them out so that people can shoot them. <laughs> uh, we've already covered the the kind of the um, activation yep. markers and the command yeah, on markers. On the green side, activating. And on the then, reverse, activated. <laughs> so you can keep track of yes, it all. Ready, done. And then you have these blue markers here at the bottom, Alessio. What are they for? <laughs> They're possibly one of the funniest things in the game, really, in my, in my opinion. Uh, they are the time displacement device tokens. Right. <laughs> also called War Machine. Sorry, War Machine? <laughs> Sorry, Time Machine yeah. tokens. And the Time Machine tokens are effectively uh, your agents. They are standing by at, you know, at your base, waiting to step through the, through, the, through the time machine, through the time displacement device, just so that you can change reality, change the present mm -hmm. by altering the past. So you, when you right. roll a really, really terrible dice and you want to re-roll it, you don't want reality to go this way, you don't want history to turn up that way, you can try to change it. So you can send some of your agents back in the past to kill that guy before he fires the rocket launcher that kills your, your general, whatever. Yeah. And, and so you play one of those, and you get to re-roll. You get to re-roll the really, you know, when you roll the one on a d20 and you go, yeah. no, anything but the one. <laughs> I rolled the one. Yeah. And you go, right, okay, I can play this, send it to the past, send my agent to the past, change the history, and I re-roll this dice. And what if I send an agent? <laughs> yes. Can I you, out agent your agent? Well, you have agents in standby as well. Uh, so, of course, if, uh, if you, when I use my agents, you can go, fine, okay. I think you can re-roll that dice. I don't think it's that important. Mm -hmm. I'll save my agent to roll the dice when I roll that one, that horrible yeah. thing. But, or instead you go, no, that's a very important. You know, if you roll that one, your commander heads explodes and stuff like this. So, no, I think I'll send my agents in the past as well to try to stop your agents from accomplishing their mission. Yeah. So you have the, you know, like, I want to kill your mom before you're born. I will send somebody to protect my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so it's exactly that. You, you send both, if you both do that, if you both send the agents in the past, then you have a roll off, a mm -hmm. battle between the agents just off the table yeah. and see which agent wins. And obviously, depending on which agent wins, you either get to accomplish the mission and get the reroll mm -hmm. or fail the mission and not get the reroll. Well, I see on the other side of the, the agent cards, um, this game runs on poly dice. We'll be coming to that very shortly. But, um, there are dice um, dice types actually listed on the back. So yes. we've got D8s, D12s, and a single D20 yes. there. So, Well, normally he would send a D8 agent. So that yeah. is your machine sending the equivalent of Arnie, a T800 infiltrator, down to, to accomplish the mission, while the, the humans will send uh, uh, one of the resistance soldiers to go and uh, try to mm. stop it. Both sides can upgrade the agent they send, i.e. The humans can send a hero, they can send Reese himself, yeah. yeah. So they can actually, you can pay extra points to either get more tokens or to upgrade your tokens. Mm -hmm. And you can, for example, upgrade uh, tokens with a D12. So when you do the, the roll off in the past, you know, you reveal that I don't have a D8, I have a D12. I actually sent a good guy in there, you know, I really trust this guy to stop you, kind of thing. Yeah. The machines can also upgrade to D12, maybe yeah. sending a Terminatrix instead uh -huh. with inflatable parts, etc. Uh, while the machines only can also send a D20, and that's where you really want the mission to go, then you send a T1000. That T1000, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cut them to pieces. <laughs> yes. So yeah, there is a, the, the opportunity to have better agents in the Yeah. In the okay. Um, on the other piece of uh, card, Alessio, we have um, the terrain pieces. So yep. Let's just um, have a look at that. So we have some area terrain. Correct. Imagine a collapsed building kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, a few more of your activation uh, counters. And then we have these pieces here, Alessio. So what do, how do these go together? Well, these are our uh, barricades, barriers, effectively. So where you, if you punch out those bits as well, mm -hmm. thank you. I need the big pieces and the small pieces. So what happens is you stick the, I can see I'm gonna stay in camera. I'm not as mm -hmm. good as you. <laughs> so uh, where is the camera? Yeah. So here, 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So if you stick them together and then put them on the, no, the, mm -hmm. that one, and then put it down yeah. on the table. Okay. That's your level one barricade. Mm -hmm. Or your other level one barricade here. Yeah. Because if you just put them down, they stay down. If you want to move them around a lot, you may want to glue them. Mm -hmm. But there you go. You have those. Yeah. And those cover models. You know, up to waist height, so obviously mm -hmm. they don't block line of sight, but they do provide cover, so you yeah. can shoot over them, etc. If you decide that you don't want them to just just give cover, but you can do that, and ah. suddenly you have a size two barricade or size three barricade, whatever, yeah. uh, that actually blocks line of sight, so actually models will not be able to mm -hmm. see across that because basically it goes over their heads. Yeah. So. You got six of those, so you can build either six low level barricades, three high level barricades, or, or, or a mix. mix in between. Yeah. Um, so, on the subject of terrain, in the box you also get a terrain mat. Now, this is quite a sizable thing, actually. It's uh, a three by two, yes. The detail on this is absolutely beautiful. Um, <laughs> yes, you get uh, a lot of uh, skulls, <laughs> skulls, as you would expect. So, <laughs> bones, rubble, and a road. So, um, let me try and show you if you some of the detail that's on this. You can see rib cages, skulls, bones, road. It's all there, um, and then it's actually a double-sided thing, so you have right. the inside of a complex. Yeah, that's the Rebel base, a resistance base, underground. Mm -hmm. uh, is, I don't know if you've seen the first movie, the Sigrun yeah. Reese goes down and is looking at Sarah's, uh, Sarah's picture, and then suddenly an infiltrator gets into the, into the complex and mm -hmm. starts to fight and kill people. Et so that, that is you know, the entrance here, and you have the, the, the power generator, the command room, the sick bay, and the armory, yeah. as well as a lot of other rooms and corridors. Kind of okay, um, moving on a bit further. Um, in the box, we have the quick, the quick reference. Different shit, yeah. So once you get up to speed with the rules, this is the only thing you're going to need. You can very, yes. very quickly get um, the 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 activation of the turn order, how it all works. Um, the, you have the whole quick play here, and then on the back, you have every model stat and every weapon stat. Yeah, and the stats are. Three. Everything yes. has got three stats, mm -hmm. and because of the color coding with the with the dice being all color coded, then a stat is reasonably easy to remember. So a resistance soldier, for yeah. example, is green, four plus, yellow. Mm -hmm. That's all you need to remember. Yes, <laughs> and one of the great things about this is um, even if. Um, even if, for example, you had color blindness, because it's based on poly dice, there's different shapes yep, as well. Yeah, there's a shape, so there's the actual writing of the number of dice in there, yeah. so even if you're color blind, you should be okay. And uh, if you're not, then you have an association, immediate association between the color and the dice. Yeah, overall. because we now get to, to break through, and there are our poly dice. So again, it works on poly dice! Yeah! <laughs> so, um, I like poly dice. <laughs> so you get a Big old bag of poly dice, um, two of each Alessio, yeah? Yes. So, um, one for you, one for your opponent. Yeah, or two when you, you know, some weapons yeah. roll two dice. But again, the weapons in the status set you roll a maximum of two dice, so mm -hmm. you're fine. There are some bigger guns, mini guns and stuff that roll more yeah. than two, but you know. But to give not, you an example, um, if you were playing with an endoskeleton, which is your standard Terminator, um, it, its skill is based on a D8. Yellow. Um, which is yellow, and it, its resolution is based on a D20, which is, which is blue. And if you had uh, the the weapon, what's the typical weapon of a Terminator? Plasma gun. So a plasma rifle. Plasma rifle is the rebels. The, mm -hmm. They have plasma guns. So plasma, weapons, yeah, plasma gun, range long, rate of fire two, and its power is based on a D8. So, so. and all of that is just got just from this chart here. Yeah, um, wrong lang lo range long, as in it can shoot a long range, which is anything longer than, than this stick yeah. is in long range. Uh, ra rate of fire two, so you roll two dice, and mm -hmm. what dice is the next thing is the power. So two of these at long range, that's all it says. Fire two of these at long range, and you're done. That's now, the getting stuck into the game itself, um, like I said, you have this, uh, what is a beautiful, beautiful rule book. Yeah. Um, so everything is in there in terms of how the game is played. The pictures. And there's Daenerys herself, yeah. <laughs> um, so all of the, the aspects of the game, how line of sight works, how cover 
and um, you know, uh, shooting, and when you can and cannot shoot is it's all important. Like actually, important also to know that the you see the cover only matters for the rebels. Yeah, rebels keep their head low. This is a full of debris area, mm -hmm. post-apocalyptic. So whenever you're in long range, you're in cover, yeah. regardless. Which obviously stops you from having to measure mm -hmm. above the stick. You're in cover. Yeah, so rebels. Very good at taking cover, resistance, you know, try to always keep their head low, so it's very important for them. Mm -hmm. Machines, on the other hand, never count as in cover. Yeah. Because they just walk straight, upright, mm -hmm. they don't care, they don't even try to take cover. They just yeah. walk and do their thing, rely on being as tough as, as a tank, mm -hmm. just themselves. So most, most small arm fire will just bounce off them, yeah. so they just walk straight, advance, so they're never in cover. Even if they're in a difficult like an area of terrain, mm -hmm. you just wait for them to come, you know, because at some stage they will walk in the open for a moment and you shoot them. Yeah. So they never take cover. Which means that actually when you play as the machines, you play in a different way from the humans. Absolutely mm -hmm. different. You know, you're gonna yeah. have fewer models, but very, very tough, horribly strong, horribly tough, very brave, determined, don't care about cover, so you just advance and you do your thing. <laughs> While, <laughs> absolutely. It makes yeah. you play that way. Well, the re mm. for the resistance is you're very fragile <laughs> in yeah. a world with people that can punch through your chest or shoot you with plasma weapons. So you have to be cunning, clever, work together, shoot them a lot, use your commanders, use your strategy, shoot them down, shoot them, shoot them, shoot them until they fall over, not necessarily dead, and then shoot them some more when they're on the ground mm -hmm. and finish them off. <laughs> so that's what you need to do. Now, in terms of the, the actual game type, Celestio, there's um, rule for missions and then once you've rolled for a mission you can then uh, roll for um, a setup. Yeah. So there's uh, what, 36 different options of different game types that you could end yeah, up Yeah, if you decide to play the competitive style if you want, so where you have a 3 by 2 area or a 4 by 4 area or a 6 by 4 area or whatever, but you roll 6 missions, 6 deployments, 36 basic competitive games. Yeah. But of course in there there's then scenarios that work on the in the base, where mm -hmm. actually again you have different infiltration missions, uh, you have also uh, narrative scenarios which yeah. work on both the top and the bottom you mm -hmm. know from just make up your story and play a typical story like free the slaves from this camp where they're doing experiments on them you want to get in you know de deactivate the, the laser fences and get them out yeah so narrative type scenarios or even play through the movie there's a play through the movie campaign in there mm -hmm. so we start with the first battle in the war against the machines the second battle and when Reese steps through the steps through the war machine, the time, why do I say war machine? Yeah, the time, the time machine, machine. The time yeah. machine. <laughs> it keeps. It goes back into the past. So the third scenario of the campaign is not in here. You have the first two, and he says this continues. But first, you have to watch the movie. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, We'll, we'll be back, we'll be back with yeah. the other scenarios, but you first start with that. So yeah. there's, there's like between that. The quick start play, and uh, there's about 50 scenarios in this box. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, we then end up in the force lists, so all of the detail on each of the individual um, competents yep, that are, with, that with are in there. Values. Um, as Alessio says, you then have your narrative scenarios, um, and they're all listed in there. And then we're coming up to um, one of my favorite, favorite parts of the book. And that is an entire hobby section at the back. <laughs> painting and terrain. I just love it, the fact that it's even there. Um, so you have the, the painting guides for the Terminators themselves. Um, painting guides for the Resistance. Yeah, we and had then, to use you know we had to use three up models there because we didn't have the models yet. So yeah. you know <laughs> it was oof, hard work. <laughs> and then that. into it's been a while since you've seen these, but proper proper uh, little guides to handmade terrain for um, for uh, barricades and buildings and hills. Yep. Right up to um, how you make your actual. Gaming table. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, you for to Gareth and Annie White, which helped mm -hmm. and did all of this. Is They've been great. Thank you, guys. So it's. Um, <laughs> I think it's fabulous to actually see uh, to see you go to the, that level of detail of actually having a proper hobby guide in in the actual book itself. Right. Preference. I've been teasing you this long. Let's have a look at some minis, will we? So, um, <laughs> as Alessio says, there is a fast play guide in there as well. So. If you open the box and you've had a flick through the rule book, it, it's great. Everything you need is in there. But if you just want to concern yourself with what's only in the box, um, it's worth having a flick through that. 16 pages. And uh, believe me, after you've got one turn under your belt, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be no problem 
in in moving on with this game. It, the rules are very very elegant and very slick. So, oh. Oh. And <laughs> I, I've honor. been taken through them, and uh, we will try to do a demo game um, on this, so as uh, to take you guys through it, and you'll see from the demo game just how quick it all comes together. But let's have a look at the minis. So there are in total how many frames in the box? So there's four for the resistance. Yes, four frames of resistance for sixteen resistance fighters and four five frames of the terminators yes yeah, for 10 endoskeletons and five crawlers mm -hmm. so um let's have a look at the the endoskeletons and crawlers first so there's our endoskeletons now they're um they're in three parts the crawlers are just a single part and um, they go together incredibly quickly i was i was able to put together a frame in one minute and 17 seconds which is Quite good, quite good. I think not was, quite. I think it was respectable. It's not world record. What's the world record? 40, for? 45 seconds. 45 seconds? <laughs> um, at the end of it, um, without glue, it just goes together like that. And there we have them. Um, your little crawler just goes like that. And these guys here, there's no glue on these. I just shake them around. Um, if you're going to be playing with it at any kind of, um, you know, regularity, I would definitely put a wee drop of uh, glue on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's I hard plastic, so you could use a plastic glue on that you without can. any problem. The thing is that after you put them together, as you know, you can shake, you can play, but also you can rotate and change the pose. Ah, the so gun, you get a little bit of poseability. Yeah, exactly. So you go, you know, yeah. glue the, the ten of them in slightly different positions. And again, these guys, if you look at the trailer of the movie, they don't do a lot of athletic stuff. They're no. fairly regular, sort yeah. of, you know, static. <laughs> so. That helps in the fact that basically all you have is that turning torso, shooting at different targets. That's yeah. what they do as they advance <laughs> slowly. So um, the weapons that they that they're carrying are the plasma guns. Yep. But if they get up close, they've got Terminator claws, <laughs> which are pretty devastating <laughs> as well. So, horrible. Yes. Um, on the other sprues, we have the resistance. Um, and you get four resistance fighters uh, per frame. Uh, you get a female resistance uh, fighter and three males. Uh, the female, I'll just turn over to this side, is, is labeled Miniature D and has a choice of two arms. And then the males can use any of these arms here entirely interchangeably. Yeah, the, the, they all dry fit like you described, but of course if you want to just cut them apart and use some glue, then any, any arm will go on anything. anything. Yes, anything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've built some of these guys as well, so let me just uh, quickly show you those. And I'll show you how the arms go on as well. So there are the, the resistance fighters. So the female resistance fighter and three males. The arms, for example, this set of arms here, which is kind of a, a what kind of a rifle is that? It's a plasma rifle, and uh, the backpack basically <laughs> links the the pointy arm with mm -hmm. with, the, with the plasma rifle. So if we take that miniature there, they go on from the top and push down, and it goes on simply like that. It's um, there, and we're done. And to show you the the flexibility that you would have with these, is you could take that weapon option off. Take the bazooka off this guy, put the bazooka onto the guy that is now on his knees. So it goes on. I'll just make sure I've got okay. it on correctly here. Yeah, you can angle there it go. slightly up to fire or slightly down yeah. in a carry position. Effectively. So that's now like that. And then this guy here, I can just drop that on there. And there you go. He's pointing. And he is <laughs> pointing and holding his plasma rifle. So. I particularly, sorry, particularly like sticking two of the kneeling guys next, one pointing yeah. and one firing the rocket launcher. So you get like a mini anti-tank team. Yes. Where it's going there. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. So, so <laughs> the, there you have it. That's uh, There's tons of different options for the miniatures. And as Alessio says, if you want to get at it with uh, some clippers and a craft knife, you could start to do all kinds of variations and things with them to, to make sure that you can have as much variation in quite a big force of these uh, as possible. Uh, the, the key thing to remember is um, uh, the game is not it doesn't run <laughs> in squads. Of course, I drop it, but it survives. I drop models, Alessio. I've, I've kind of got a trademark for that now. Um, the game doesn't operate in squads. It's all single models, so every model is standalone in its own right. Um, so 
Oh, <laughs> I've dropped it. Big fingers. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so you will have enough variation there to actually create quite a big force uh, of the resistance um, without having duplicates in there. Yeah, there's so. 16, 16 guys, uh, I guess and girls, and they have four uh, rocket launchers, four grenade launchers, or so kind of heavy weapons, mm -hmm. and then they have a, a very a, quite a few plasma rifles and shotguns, assault rifles. So yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of combinations yeah. you can do with that. Um, finally, um, we have another special miniature. Is this a limited edition miniature that's a... It's a yep. It's a metal miniature that has been sculpted by none other than Michael Perry. Mm -hmm. And it's Kyle Reese. Nice. So there we have uh, Kyle Reese. Um, he looks great, actually. He looks really good. Um, and is it only uh, is it restricted to just this starter set or the yes. first number of starter sets or uh, well it's in the starter sets all the starter mm -hmm. sets of at least this 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 wave of the yeah. starter sets uh, is uh, we sold him as a resin as well a uh, salute in blister so we do some limited runs of of a resin version mm -hmm. in shows just shows uh, just in shows and. There are going to be more resin characters coming later on, but yeah. uh, this metal model is only available in the starter set. I could, I tell you what, I could get used to these metal models that come with the base and everything all in one piece. <laughs> that, that is very handy. And then the final bit in the box the is fate. the fate dice, which is a very interesting mechanic in its own right. So basically, we get together. We agree to play, okay? We roll on the chart to see what we're going to play, or we decide on a scenario, or we yep. make a scenario mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. It then comes down to um, the, the first player to, to take his uh, to take his turn, and he rolls this. Yes. Do you want to yep. tell us about it? So basically, after you decide who goes first with initiative, then the player that wins the tactical edge basically rolls this, and in this case, I get a two. Mm -hmm. The dice can tell me two, two. Then one, 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 and fate. Mm -hmm. There's one face that says fate. So this tells you how many models you get to activate uh, in a sequence. So for example, if I roll one, I just activate one guy. I would yeah. put a green marker next to the, the model that I'm activating. And then I would, uh, do you have the, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if you rolled a and one, kind of, uh, you would have this guy, you put a green marker next to him. Okay. And then he's he, he is available to activate. Yep. Um, and then once you've activated him and done it, it's worth it. You mark that over, and he's activated. Um, if you got a two, you then would activate you can, two guys. You can have two guys that are available to activate, mm -hmm. and you can do your stuff yeah. with so both you, of them. You first say, "I'm activating this guy here and this guy here," so you have to think what you want to do, and then you pick one guy and activate. Do your thing. Move. Shoot. Activated. Yeah. Then you go back to the another guy and go right now. He will just stay there and shoot. Done. Mm -hmm. And these marks them as done. When when you have done all the activations, then you pass the dice to the other player, and then he gets to roll and see roll. how his yep. activations work. So the but let's see what, what happens if I uh, say that those three guys there, and I roll. Fate. <laughs> well, normally, unfortunately, that's an unfortunate situation where you basically the fate is effectively a zero. Yeah. Fate is against you. Fate says, You're not it. getting a go. You're not getting a go. <laughs> you have to give it back to the other guy. So the yeah. dice gets passed to the other guy, so it will be my turn. I'll be rolling, activating my stuff, killing your guys, etc. And then once I'm done my activation, then I pass it to you. We keep passing it backwards and forwards until all the models have been activated. Yeah. That's the end of the so turn. So every one of them has a, a has red, a marker. A red yeah. marker. So everybody would have been marked with a red marker. Everybody has done an action that turn. At that stage, end of the turn, will be tidying up things, and the thing you do at the end of the turn is you remove one red marker per model. Mm -hmm. So all the red markers comes off, unless somebody has a lot of red markers, as we've seen before, that can happen as a... <laughs> you get shot, you get a lot of pain markers, you can get down, you can get, uh, you can get slightly reeling and vulnerable. But basically, if you have more than one, then you would just lose one. So which yeah. means that obviously by losing one every turn, you can slowly recover, getting mm -hmm. back to your feet. Uh, but you may even start some turns already kind of in a condition of not doing stuff. Yeah. So at the end of the turn, um, in this instance, we just remove them, they can work, uh, yep. do whatever they want. However, if it reached the end of the turn, I'd re remove that, he can't do anything this turn, That's he's turn. stuck there. Yeah, basically he's waking Reconfiguring. Up. And provided he doesn't get any more red markers on him at the end of the next turn, that would be taken off and he's back in the game. Clearly. But if he gets more on him, he still stays there stuck. Yeah. 
It's a sort of, it's like a pinning mechanic yeah, type yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, indeed. Like, I mean, with the machines, you get quite a few of these of these markers on them sometimes. With the humans, they tend to die too quickly yeah. for accum before accum they accumulate a lot of those. And of course, there are the special rules, like, uh, you know, there's a special rule that, for example, if you have a lot of red markers on, and, uh, sorry, say you're a human with lots of red markers, but I really uh -huh. want you to fire your rocket launcher. If if I have a, a hero within a command range, which is the range of the, that's command range, the mm -hmm. shortest template. Okay. Uh, if I have a hero within range, you can use a special rule called on your feet, soldier! <laughs> yes, all the special rules are, well, not all of them, but a big, big amount of the special rules are actually quotes from the movie. It's, it's quite funny, yes. You end up speaking a bit like this when you think. <laughs> uh, but yes, so there's the on your feet, soldier rule, which means that his command value allows you to remove more markers from, from troops around him to, yeah. to, to get them back on, in action. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things they do. Yeah. Um, and then with the fate dice, if you do roll a fate, there is an opportunity if you have a commander in play yes. who hasn't already activated that he can activate. When yes, it yeah. Well, that's a very Terminator thing because you know the whole point of the movie, almost of the movies, is that fate is fate set yeah. or is it not? Can mm -hmm. you change fate? Can you, you can you you know by sheer will and uh, refusing to accept fate and there's no no we'll we'll change it. There is no fate. You know the scene when Sarah is crawling with her knife into the table and says, she writes, no fate. Yeah. yeah. And she goes to try to kill the guy that develops Skynet, etc. So, if you're all fate, and it's really important, and you're really, oh my, I, I don't, I, I cannot accept this. I yes. will, you know, I'll fight against fate. And you go, if you have a commander still, you know, active, they've still not done anything this turn, the commander can use the, there is no fate, but what we make. Mm -hmm. rule. <laughs> there is no fate rule, which basically means that he can trump fate and go, no, I'm activating anyway. Even though fate says no activation, I'll say, you know, I'm activating. Yeah. So the commander can activate even if you're all fate. So that's one thing they do. Uh, also, the other thing they do is called, um, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> 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 which is, when they activate, they can also activate other people around them. So yeah. you go, you and you, come with me. So they have a command value and that's the yeah. number of other miniatures. That's right. And do those miniatures have to be in command distance or can yes. they be anywhere? Yes. So no, command any distance. miniature within yeah. that command distance, yes. they can then say, yeah. well, any miniature up to their command value they yes. can then say, That's right. we're all going to, to activate. Yes. And, you know, we, I did ponder whether to give it a, you know, a limitless range and activate anybody on the table. Because yeah. you think, well, these guys have radios, surely, etc. Mm. And the machines are linked, so clearly they could do it anywhere. But then we thought, well, but in battle there will be interference, they will act actively try to be jamming each other's signals, yeah. etc. So they probably have still to rely to line of sight, and which that's the our way to think about it. But obviously, in game terms, it makes it more interesting about positioning your guys in the yes. right place, keeping mm -hmm. your army together. So, so, so we decided, no, no, a range is about you know still you know direct contact. He needs to see the people, see what's happening, tell them, give them orders and stuff. So mm -hmm. we kept it at that range. We find that that works. Fantastic. Well, look, guys, there you have it. That is the contents of the Terminator Genesis, the war against the machines. This is the war against the machines. You know, it's, um, there's all sorts of narratives you can play, but the big one is, do you know them two minutes in each movie that just drive you nuts and you're going, ah, don't cut away from that, I want to see more. Now you get the chance to do it on your tabletop. Well, frankly, this is why we've done this. This whole game came from that specific <laughs> desire of like, I don't want two minutes of that, I want 90 minutes of that. <laughs> and there you go, well, that's it. Well, guys, there you have it. That's The War Against the Machines. It's available now. Uh, you, know, you can order it um, and get stuck in. Uh, like I said, stay tuned. Well, we are definitely going to be uh, getting stuck into this. So stay tuned to Beast of War, and we will be having a look at uh, doing a bit of a demo game of this to show you uh, exactly how it's played and maybe even get a bit of a battle report running as well. Alessio, look, thank you so much for coming well, in and showing it off. <laughs> it's, it's a fabulous product. I really, really love it. Um, have you got much plans for for um, uh, people to expand this and take it take it a bit further? Yeah, basically we, we start with uh, the starter set and uh, all the bits in the starter set can be bought separately. So you can have boxes of resistance soldiers, boxes of endoskeletons, the dice, the rule book separately as well. But we also have a range of, uh, basically we try to cover all the infantry in, 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 the, in the rule book. So we'll do infiltrators, T-1000, all the war against the machines version. So mm -hmm. John Connor, all the leaders. So we, we'll, Follow all the infantry for sure in the next few months, you know, a few blisters at a time. Mm -hmm. And 
then later on, maybe September, we'll have a 1984 <laughs> box, which goes back in time, but goes back to the, there is one Terminator, one T-1000, and a lot of cops with guys that kind of, <laughs> kind of hardly, hardly hurt him, and, and Sarah Connor, and, and, uh, and of course Arnie, that is his yeah. protector, guardian. So we'll do a thing set in a different thing with, with its own little scenarios and rules, so you can finish playing the other scenarios, which <laughs> don't give you here. And, I mean, if things go well, the first we'll start to move into big kits. So yeah. obviously this is the big kits. Everything else we're gonna do. Yes, all the infantry, absolutely. If we get, if this game is successful, then of course you already have the rules for hunter killers, flying hunter killers, ground mm -hmm. hunter killers, spider tanks on the machine side. If you've seen the trailer, you know the big kind of huge robot thing that fires, fires a, a raise. Uh, on the machine side, so all these things, and then on the on the rebels on the resistance side, uh, we have Abrams tanks, yeah. Apache helicopters, Black Hawk helicopters, okay, uh, Bradley's yeah. transports, you know, all this, you know, all Humvees with plasma guns on, Humvees with machine guns on, all this kind of stuff, cars converted, you know, pickup trucks with machine guns and, and plasma guns on, so all of that. Fantastic. And that's it once again. Thank you very much, guys. And um, post in the comments below. Let us know what you think. If you've got questions for Alessio, make sure you put them in there and we'll do our best to get them answered. Other than that, thank you for watching and stay tuned and we will be back with more Terminator soon. <laughs> we'll be back. We will be back. <laughs> Become a general of mighty armies at the Kings of Warhub. Take command of elves, dwarves and orcs in this game of masked fantasy combat on beastofwar.com. It's time for 28mm World War II action. Will you recreate history or reshape it your way? On the Bolt Action Hub at beastofwar.com.